for blast off. X minus five, four, three, two, one, fire. Lords and ladies, geeks, geekerellas, geekulas, and geekeritas, I am Lord Bloodraw, and this is Lord Bloodraw's Nerve Rack and Theater. And tonight's film comes to us from the mind of that incomparable auteur, Edward D. Wood Jr. <laughs> in a way. Uh, you see, the story comes from a script written in the 1950s by Ed Wood, who presumably couldn't get the funds together to shoot it. The director, Norman Earl Thompson, found the script, reworked it, and gave us this film. <laughs> Tonight, from 1970, it's the Frankensteinian plant monster madness of the revenge of Dr. X. <laughs> now, the revenge of Dr. X was only one of the titles this film was known by. Its original title was Venus Flytrap. That, that had to be Eddie's. <laughs> it's also been known by the title Body of the Prey, which, frankly, sounds like a film we could never present here on this family show. But, for better or worse, we are presenting this one. <laughs> well, without further ado, I give to you the film that goes by many names, and I have a feeling you'll be calling it many names before it's all over. <laughs> Here is The Revenge of Dr. X. Hang in there. I'm a non-smoker. Oh, excuse I... me, excuse me. My mind is not working. There's so many things. Center of the storm, 100 miles south. Wind direction changed again to north-northeast. Uh, wind velocity here, uh, 8 miles per hour. Lift off to count down now at um, 3 hours, 16 minutes, and 4 seconds. How in the hell can anybody be so utterly stupid? It's to build a rocket base on the coast of Florida. There's always another day. Another day? There's been too many other days. Days! It's all right, Paul. I'll be all right. Just a minute. Just give me a minute, please. Oh, I won't say it. You don't have to. I know what you think. Bragging here. Yes, where? Well, thank you. It's right here. Well, it's right here. The wind direction was west by northwest. By golly, we're going to make it this time. That baby is going to fly. You lost me, doctor. Has there been a change? 
Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, this phone call. There was a storm moving in on us, but it seems to be veering off in this direction. See? Now, the wind velocity holds at its present reading. That will give us just enough time. Paul, proceed as scheduled. so pass quickly and all the stress and disappointments and past failures they're all behind us now true true I think uh, Dr. Bregan should be in on this Dr. Reagan? Yes. Uh, Dr. Stanley and Dr. Shannon here has something I think you should see. Sure. Dr. Bregan, there could be a possible error in our calculations. Could be. Could be, Dr. Stanley. There is no room for could be's with this project. You see this? A mathematical error, the width of this small coin in space could represent the distance between New York and Tokyo. In the growing dimensions of space, it could throw a rocket a million miles off its targets. Dr. Stanley, could be as I cannot use. Gentlemen, I want the facts, the facts to you here. Paul, have the necessary corrections made and bring me the reports. And get those things out of my sight. Get them out of my... Here you go. Thanks. Just what I need. You need more than a drink. Uh, doctor, do you think my mind is failing? No failing, no doctor. Your present work proves that. But then I think you are overworked. A doctor? It certainly wouldn't hurt to have one look you over. Work. I thrive on it and you know it. Dr. Bregan, my old friend, you've been at this 365 days a year for five years. You're tired. We need men like you with your intelligence. I'm merely suggesting, Dr. Bregan, that all of us at some time find ourselves in need of a little rest, a little care. Now, what hospital would you suggest? Ah, uh, hospitals are for the sick. Ah, uh, I'd suggest a long trip, maybe to my country. You have all summer. Paul Nakamura, you're a very capable assistant. More, a good friend. It's only a matter of recordings until the capsule reaches its destination. All summer. I was set to visit your country once. In college, botany was my major. I was to study the relationship between the giant sequoia in California and the ancient cliptomeria in Japan. But there was a war, remember? Mathematics became all important. Botany had to take a back seat. After the war, more mathematics. Mathematics more complicated than ever before in history. Dr. Bregan. Japan is very beautiful at this time of the year. <laughs> you know, I do believe you're trying to tell me something. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. He's trying to tell you everyone is sick and tired of you. No one wants to even be in the vicinity of you for fear of having their heads bitten off by the screaming, fire-breathing tyrant you are. Everyone is tired of watching you get the vapors, then collapse like a pillowcase full of old cigarette butts. 
and he's the central character of the movie. Strap in, geeks. We're all in this together. Please leave your eyes at the door. You will not need them. Lord Blood Raw's Nerve Rackin' Auditorium presents the best of old-time radio, horror, and science fiction. Tales of terror and the uncanny that unfold on the stage of your imagination. Come experience the magic of old-time radio horror. Lord Blood Raw's Nerve Rackin' Auditorium is available on Spotify, Apple, Google, and other podcast providers. Lord Blood Raw's Nerve Rackin' Auditorium, when you seek the darkness. by no earthly law, possessing weird and enormous powers, these strange teenagers from outer space invade the Earth and prepare to possess its women. Nothing can stop their deadly advance. Earthmen are no match for their superhuman powers. They blast the flesh off humans. A moment before, she was a beautiful young girl. Now, she's a skeleton. James, you will need it. Your bullets can't hurt me. To the Revenge of Dr. X, where Dr. Grumpy Pants is leaving for Japan. Our sincere apologies to the people of Japan. And keep me posted if anything happens. Now don't you worry, 
Dr. Bregan. You're sure you won't change your mind about driving up the coast? No, I find driving very relaxing. And besides, I might find some interesting flora and fauna along the way. Well, just remember that your flight leaves at 0900 on Monday. I'll be there on time. And my cousin will meet you at the Tokyo airport. Yes, Paul. And everything's in the trunk. Yes, Paul. Well, goodbye, Dr. Bregan. Have a nice trip. Thank you so much. some trouble, huh? Well, I sure have. <laughs> Just think how much trouble both of us would have had. Right, little old Ernie and Gordon here go right quick like. Now, don't you do that. <laughs> well, they've been right sickly lately, and I'm going to have to send them back where they belong for a spell. <laughs> That'll hold them. Are they poisonous? Yep, millions of them around these parts. Now, what's your trouble, mister? I don't know. I seem to have plenty of gas. Well, sir, why don't you take a look at your car? Why don't you take a look at my snakes? No charge. Even got one of the little Carl snakes in there. Well, I'm telling you, snakes have never been of any interest to me. Oh, snakes is of an interest to everybody, even if they scared them. So go on in. I don't see how they're ever going to rack it off the ground. Your fuel line's all clogged up. Well, can you fix it? Of course I can. Take you long? Might take a spell. Make yourself at home with my snakes. No charge as long as I'm working on the car. And I even got one of those coral snakes over here. That plant, is it for sale? Cute little bugger, ain't she? Well, is it for sale? Now, what would a fella like you be wanting with a little old bug catcher like her? Nope. She ain't for sale. Too small. But there's plenty more out in the swamp there where she came from. Help yourself. Hey, shovel out of the back gate there. You're welcome to it. But don't forget, sun's out now and it brings out them snakes. Don't forget old Ernie and Gordon. They got lots of relatives out there. I won't forget, thank you. <laughs>
so small. A big one could take an arm off. Yes, it uh, could at that. mention that his cousin was. <laughs> well, now, you're an unexpected pleasure. And I might add, a very beautiful one. That you will get you everywhere, Dr. Bregan. It was you who made all the arrangements. With the help of your friend in the American consulate, who sent you his best regards and hopes you will dine with him soon. That would be nice. I must call Norman and thank him. I have arranged for your hotel, and your luggage will be taken care of. Your pleasure, Dr. Bregan. Well, I could use some refreshments. I believe you are my assistant and my guide. Lead on. Come. like to continue your botany research. So I took the liberty of asking my professor at the university, and he said he would be most happy to have you use his laboratories and greenhouse. That was most kind of him and of you. But for the time being, I'd prefer something more remote. Perhaps I've been around too many people lately. I'd like to know if I want seclusion, I could have it. Has my cousin Paul told you my family owns a number of resort hotels? No, he never mentioned it. I know the perfect place. It has a greenhouse and plenty of seclusion. That's where I became interested in Botany. That sounds great. Where is it? High in the mountains near Karuizawa. It has been abundant for years. I'm sure my father would certainly want you to use it. One thing. Those are very bad. Yeah, and that's not the only thing that's bad. Uh, my lords and ladies, at this point, I'm sure we're all thinking two things. One, instead of The Revenge of Dr. X, this movie should have been called Dr. Grumpy Pants' Japanese Vacation. And two, we'd all much rather follow this guy for the rest of the movie. <laughs> well, uh... <laughs> Right? 
all the cool things. You want all the cool things. But where can you find all the cool things? It's all right here at NovemberFire.com. All the cool t-shirts. All the cool DVDs. All the cool masks. Be extra cool and tell them Lord Blood Draw sent you. All the cool things. At NovemberFire.com. It is safe to state that the grandchildren of some of the people in this theater will not be born on Earth. come from the bowels of hell, a transformed race of walking dead, zombies guided by a master plan for complete domination of the earth. Plan 9 from outer space. Starring the most frightmarish cast ever, Bella Lugosi, the seductive vampira, and Thor Johnson as the walking dead. Turn off your electro gun! No! No! Stop him, Dennis! I can't get it! It's jammed! Stop him, you fool! Bullets bounce off their bodies. Rockets, missiles, jets cannot stop their death ships. What earthly power can stop this terror? For a glimpse of things to come, see this blast of screen suspense. For it could be happening right now. late at night and seen a coffin open. Have you ever thought what it would be like to see a person's head amputated? Think. Think of things so horrible that the human mind cannot imagine them. See all this and more when you see on stage, in person, that crazy mixed up Dr. Evil and his terrors of the unknown. Unlike anything that you've ever seen or heard of in the past. Hideous creatures from beyond the grave. Leave the stage and grab girls right out of their seats. Girls, do not come alone. Bring your boyfriend to protect you when the lights go out. You may find a live snake or rat under your seat. A real dead body is given away to some lucky person at every performance. Also, in person, the mummy and King Kong famous Hollywood gorilla, real and alive. Plus, on the screen, two horrific motion pictures. Dr. Evil and his tears of the unknown. Plus, two horrific pictures. <laughs> I 
seeing Dr. Bragan. I can understand why your father decided this wasn't a good place for a resort hotel. All it needed was a new road, but the cost was too much. I haven't been up here for years. I don't know what... An active volcano. Another reason for the decline of my father's property. Frightening. But it's not dangerous. I hope you're right. Let's get out of here. what I nearly forgotten. Are you unhappy? On the contrary, I couldn't have designed it any better for my plans. Come, let me show you the hotel. Good. for my father, and we startled him. As I said before, Asama only looks dangerous most of the time. My father said some of the rooms are still furnished. You'll be comfortable here. Room. He certainly is an odd character. Can I get you a cup of coffee? No, thanks. I can get rid of him if you like. Oh, oh no, that won't be necessary. He can't help his appearance, and he probably couldn't hold a job anyplace else. My father said he's a good worker. I'm sure he's quite capable. It's a lonely life up here. I suppose that's why he took the job. No one to stare at him. People can be very unkind. Ah, I understand. Well, it's been a long day. If you'll excuse me, I think I'll go to my room. Good night. Oh, yes. Uh, thank you again, and good night. Good night, Doctor. Thank <laughs> you. 
police, but uh, probably good to have around. I don't want anybody spying once we start to work. Come, let's look around. Oh, where's the greenhouse? I want to see that first. It's over there. Another good shape. Old Kawa is somewhat of a gardener and has been taking care of it. Good, let's have a look. It's the puppy of the big dog. Now she's going to be a mother. Doctor, I was telling you about the dog. I have more important things on my mind than dog. Please! to be disturbed. Do you hear? If I can't have what I want here, then I'll have to find a place somewhere else. No one. Do you understand? No one is to disturb this box. Looks like Dr. Bregan is turning from grumpy scientist to full-on mad scientist. But you know, you really can't blame him. The accommodations at that place are everything a mad scientist needs. It's gloomy and remote, it has a convenient volcano nearby, and a live-in hunchbacked assistant. It's perfect! Now get to work and make a monster, will you? Or at least do something interesting. Like monsters? Like horror? Like sci-fi? You'll love Maniac Monster Designs. Stickers, enamel pins, patches, magnets, tees, pillows. Maniac Monster Designs for everything retro, spooky, and fun. You'll find Maniac Monster Designs on eBay, Facebook, Instagram, and at ManiacMonsters.com. Now you can have cool monster designs anytime, anywhere with Maniac Monster Designs. Vincent Price, and you're invited to my party in the house on Haunted Hill, 
where so far the ghosts have murdered only seven people. So won't you come and make it eight? You'll see human heads without bodies. <coughs> Mysterious pools of blood dripping from the ceiling. The walls move slowly in against you. Don't try to escape, you can't. No. Are you ready, dear? Yes. Damn you. The ghosts are waiting, so won't you join me in the house on Haunted Hill? Hurry. Or you'll be late for your own funeral. of darkness rises Garganta the true king of monsters he's on his way alive in person to scare the yell out of you Garganta on the stage in Dr. Siltini's giant triple scream show for the first time on any stage the stage show that brought you the Frankenstein monster in person now brings you direct from Hollywood Garganta, the giant gorilla of the universe, alive and in person, in a three-hour performance filled with more chills, thrills, laughs than you ever experienced in this century. It is engrossing, exciting, fascinating, filled with tense climaxes, gripping scenes, beautiful starlets. Yes, it's Garganta, this wild, inhuman menace, this 782 pounds of dynamite that makes Kong the gorilla look like a monkey. And that's not all. During the dark sea ants when all the lights are dim, ghosts, spirits, and vampires descend into the audience. You may find yourself holding a ghost, your girl, or someone else's girl. So watch out when the lights go out. But as Mae West would say, it'll separate the men from the boys. In New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, critics have proclaimed this stage attraction to be the show you must not miss. Even though it's a stage presentation to send you home in frantic flight, there are also some very eye-appealing scenes created by these beautiful Hollywood starlets in gorgeous costumes designed by Adrian. Yes, it's a stage show for everyone. But those of you under 16, please be accompanied by an adult. An evil reborn from the grave of Frankenstein, bringing a macabre nightmare to a teenage world of rock and roll emotions. For the first time, a female descendant of the infamous Frankenstein, deadlier, more terrifying than ever before. He needed her kiss to satisfy his desire, but he wanted her soul for the fiendish creation that was to rule the earth in terror. I'm sure of one thing. You better hurry before the brain cells are damaged completely. Frankenstein's daughter. Now everything was ready. Who would be his first victim? Who will feel the cold sting of death? Kill him. Kill him! Call her off. Don't make me shoot. Go ahead and shoot. She can't even feel it. Kill him! Back! Get back! Kill him! For the most suspenseful and gripping moments you have ever spent, see this masterpiece of Scream a Second Terror.
idea what's out there. Do any of us? Stars? Planets? Other galaxies? Perhaps life as we know it? Perhaps soon we'll know. My life has been out there. It still seems to be. It's my probe, my project, that speeds on its way to another planet to search its depth, its soil, its life, perhaps. It's mysteries, when there are so many mysteries right here on our own planet we haven't even solved. We haven't even scraped the upper regions of the ocean, let alone its farthest depths. Now, we feel that life came first from the ocean, but do we know it as fact? If it is fact, then all animal life, also human beings, are derived from plant life. I've never thought of it that way before. Well, think of it, girl. Think of it. Think of the possibilities out there and here at the same time. May I help, please? Can you keep an open mind? Can you ask me that after the last few days? Um, it will be dark before we get home, and it's beginning to look like rain. Come closer. Careful. A slight shot could damage the plant. Then it is a plant. One completely alien to Japan. I protected it and kept it alive all the way from Wilmington, North Carolina. Must be pretty important. What I have in mind for it is an important thing. For a while, I thought it was dying. So far gone, I couldn't revive it. But I found through a mixture of mountain sand and fresh lava rock, I was not only able to revive it, but to strengthen it. You know what it is? I've never seen anything like it. Watch. Why, it's carnivorous. Darwin called you Dionia Mesipula. I christen you Insectivorous. More commonly known as a Venus flytrap. An interesting plant, our little cannibal. Now watch this. I don't understand. An angile stimulus does not suffice. It normally requires the presence of the prey. Then a crushing movement begins and continues until the surface of both lobes press against the body of the prey. Digestion starts immediately. A digestive fluid more powerful than in humans. Now watch this. digestion to bother with it. It simply allows the thing it rejects to escape. It's a little wonder. Charles Darwin became interested. He called it the most wonderful plant in the world. Perhaps he had another theory about the origin of life. This plant can think and reason. Then why can't it be human?
humans, you're weak. I'll find a way. Mark my word, I'll find a way. You will become the most powerful thing on this universe. Your mother was a soil. Perhaps... Perhaps the lightning will become your father. Can't be all about truck. Certainly not. The road couldn't take the strain. How then? If I'm to succeed, I must have it. With oxen, it's much slower, but you can be sure of getting everything here safely. That's a very good idea. Let's get going. You know, I don't think Dr. Grumpy Pants can drive a stick shift. What do you think, Igor-san? Yeah, that's what I thought. Please leave your eyes at the door. You will not need them. Lord Bloodraw's Nerve Rackin' Auditorium presents the best of old-time radio, horror, and science fiction. Tales of terror and the uncanny that unfold on the stage of your imagination. Come experience the magic of old-time radio horror. Lord Bloodraw's Nerve Rackin' Auditorium is available on Spotify, Apple, Google, and other podcast providers. Lord Bloodraw's Nerve Rackin' Auditorium. When you seek the darkness. Doomed to produce a race of ever-living monstrosities such as this thing. <coughs> Worse, can a ruthless woman of great wealth buy this living flesh so she may live on like the vampire of legend? Deep underground, in this chamber of horrors, bodies are for sale. The bodies of young girls. And this is the buyer. Girls are experimented on like animals, in this house of horror, where the only escape is death. Strange legends tell of vampires that crawl from graves. Does the world again face this monstrosity? You are invited to join the Banshees, the werewolves, the vampires, the gooks, coming to our Halloween convention of spooks. You'll enjoy this lively group if your blood doesn't end up in the soup. Practice your screams. Break out your shrouds. Tighten your nerves. And join the crowds at our convention of spooks.
Now back to The Revenge of Dr. X, where Dr. Grumpy Pants has decided it's time for a pop quiz. What do you know of the Venus Vesiculosa? Well, it's a long tubular plant that waves back and forth on the ocean floor and devours helpless smelling life that come its way. Yes, a tubular marine plant that devours prey. Now, I'm a Venus flytrap. Land bound. The Venus vesiculosa, what about? Can you imagine what a potential of a giant those two plants grafted into each other would be? Then you know of the Venus vesiculosa? I'll know more when I get to Tokyo. How long will we be there? As long as it takes me to order the equipment. Ready? Would you make arrangements for our rooms? I have something one to do. Certainly. And please tell the bell captain to call me a taxi. I'm going to take a train to Tokyo. I'll call you as soon as I'm clear. Dr. Reagan, don't you think it would be wiser if I start ordering the material you require? Our time is short. Good. I'll meet you here for dinner about uh, seven. Uh-huh. Good. The motor station. I... of Chiba, where the Venus Vesiculosa might be found. Are we going there? Well, just as soon as equipment I ordered is on its way. You need diving equipment. Well, an aqualung, I'm a pretty good swimmer ever since I was a boy. And you? I am also a very good swimmer. I don't need an aqualung. I dive without one. Domo arigato. But uh, you can't stay down very long that way. You would be surprised. <laughs> I guess not. You've already proved yourself a very remarkable person. Thank you, Doctor. My father has a hotel on the Chiba coast. Now, your father is also a very remarkable man. But he's too busy making money. Seems 
looks like we just finished our last dive. It's cold up here and cold down there. Well, maybe this weather breaks soon. Suzuki and I are going up the beach about a mile. We'll fan out as long as time permits. And young lady, you'd better stay close to shore. And don't try going down too deep or staying too long. You understand? I just as soon not lose such a lovely assistant. The nice things you see at times, Let's go. up to my ears. Oh, I remember one saying to you, I didn't want to be around people. I'd been crowded too much, but now. Don't give up, Dr. Bregan. You're not fooling me. You know what you are? You are just plain old-fashioned tired. It's not people, it's not the solitude. When I was out there this afternoon, mm -hmm. I lost control of myself. I felt absolutely alone. I tried to tap the whole ocean bottom with my bare hands. That wasn't loneliness you felt. It was aggravation, frustration, because it is taking you so long to find your Venus Vesiclosa. Oracle, thank you. Thank you for being you. And how could you have been lonely down there? I was with you. Maybe. Maybe when my work's finished here, there'll be time for other things. Yamas. Yamas? The famous woman divers of Chiba. They dive deeper than any human without artificial aids. It is their profession, gathering up Arani and other mussels from the ocean bottom. They've been diving in these waters all their lives. And if the Venus Vesiclosa is around here, they know and where. Well, why haven't you told me about this before? Would you have listened before? <laughs> I guess you're right. I had to look for myself first. Well, uh, how do you contact Mama, these? That's yeah. the easy part. We'll contact them on the beach. You contact them. Bring them here to me. I like to talk to people on my own terms, not theirs. Now, come on. All right. Yes, the Amas, the diving girls of Chiba. They find the elusive plant the doctor is looking for so he can finally, finally, make his monster. Unfortunately, the diving girls of Chiba dive topless, and this being a family show, I can't show them to you. The, the girls, I mean. But trust me, they find the plant. Don't they, igor son? See? If you can't trust igor son, who can you trust? Lord Blood Raw's Nerve Rack and Theater is made possible by Lord Blood Raw's Patreon supporters. Lord Blood Raw keeps the love of vintage horror and science fiction alive with three weekly shows The Nerve Rack and Theater, Lord Blood Raw's Nerve Rack and Auditorium, the podcast featuring the best of old time radio horror shows, and the Patreon exclusive series The Cathode Zone presenting episodes of Golden Age classic genre TV shows. For more info, and to see the premiere episode of Lord Bloodraw's Cathode Zone, go to patreon.com slash lordbloodraw. For two million years in these subterranean caves, a creature of superhuman evil was entombed in a wall of ice, waiting to be free, waiting to live again. Travel with us on a journey into a world where nightmare becomes reality. Are you telling me that an ape that lived two million years ago got onto that crate, killed the baggage man and put him in there. Yes, I am. It's alive. It must be. Travel with us, if you dare, 
on the Horror Express. Search the train and find it, whatever it is, and destroy it. But if it's alive... I want this kept quiet. I don't want to panic the passengers. The malignant power of this creature is indestructible, transferring its force from mind to mind, from body to body. Beast is not dead. I put four bullets into him. You think evil can be killed with bullets? Satan leaves. The animal that you shot was only the host. It's alive in someone on this train. You saw his eyes. One look at them and you're dead. Anything that moves near that door, kill it. <laughs> Run, run for your life. Hide, but you can't escape. No one can stop the fury and the terror of the Horror Express. As we return to the revenge of Dr. X, the topless diving girls found the plant the doctor was looking for. Now, don't worry if you're just tuning in, I couldn't show the diving girls, so you didn't miss anything. Believe me, you haven't missed a thing. The light fluid of both plants, mixed together with the highest potency of vitamins known to science. These plants have glands just like humans. Glands that determine their growth may help. I propose first to change the entire structure of those glands with these injections. Later when I feel it's strong enough, I'll fuse the venous flytrap with the venous vesiculosa. Be creating a whole new species. A plant. As human as the human element itself. But that does seem possible, Doctor. Don't tell me anything is impossible. I refuse the word impossible. And you will also if you wish to continue with me. Damn. It's nothing, it's only a scratch. Even a scratch can be dangerous. Now, let me take care of it. A bandage would get in my way. I have no time to waste. Excuse me, please. than it is. Ah, why don't you try it? The powerful digestive juices are the real danger. You'll notice I don't leave my hand in there long enough for them to start working. There is much more work to be done before our creation can be realized. Work and more work is all we can expect.
I said that's all I can do. some coffee. Thank you, Norco. It's grown in the past two days since the operation. How big will it get? Big? There's uh, no telling, really. We'll just have to wait. Our experiment is into the unknown. Big? Yes, the final answer's a long way off. Will you be taking the cover off soon? In all probability tonight. The arms must not remain under the cover for too long a time. It needs the sunlight and the purity of rain. Have you heard the weather report? It will rain. Then you've heard the weather report. I don't need to. In these mountains, it always rains at night, this time of the year. Hot and black. Just what I need. You've been working too hard again. You must rest once in a while. The success of my creation is all in the world that matters to me. Can you succeed, Doctor, if you become sick and unable to work? I'll be all right. Kawai will have breakfast ready in a little while. This is all I need. I have no time for anything else. You take so little time for rest. You should eat. You've got to keep your strength. Will you stop harping on me? I am damn well old enough to look after myself. I've been doing it for a good number of years. Yes, Doctor. It uh, does smell good. I'm uh, sorry for the way I spoke. Doctor, I am accustomed to your changing moods by now. Would you permit me to join you? I'd be most honored. It was shameful the way I spoke. No matter how busy a woman is, she always finds time to eat and to rest. A man, he is different. He finds his strength in other things. I'm sorry. If I found it like a nagging fishwife, it will not happen again. No. You are not at fault. You owe me no apologies. No scientist in the world could ask for a better assistant. That's very nice of you to say. But I mean it. Never once have I had to repeat orders. Never once has anything been mislaid. If something was needed, you were the first in the world was to be found. 
And who would have known of the Amas and their role in life? Now you bring the red to my face. She was not alone. With my own hands, I killed her. Starring Boris Karloff. Take this gun. Escort this gentleman from the castle. If he resists, kill him. The terror. His evil mystic powers go beyond man's wildest imaginings. Terror, empowered to avenge, to reward, to transform. I do love you. Is she a blood and flesh beauty a man can enjoy? I am possessed of the dead. Or is she a gossamer myth, created by a madman's distorted desires? Take your life as you took mine. And bring us together forever. Join Boris Karloff, the Frankenstein monster of all horror motion pictures, in his most blood-chilling screen experience. in a love tainted by strange, sinister terror. The siren song of the sea. Pulsating like a bongo beat, calling, driving the sea people. You saw how she looked at me, how she spoke to me. She's one of them. She's one of the sea people, and Johnny, I'm so afraid. You're a stranger here, and I guess you don't know what everybody here knows. Ellen, dear. In the past two years, Morris had two boyfriends, and they're both dead now. At last, my lords and ladies, the time has arrived. We will finally get a look at Dr. Bagan's monster. And judging from everything else we've seen in this film, I, I wouldn't get my hopes up. It must rain, it must rain. Everything depends on it. 
It's early. See the crows? There's been clouds like those before, and thunder, and lightning, and still it didn't rain. It will rain. You're always so damn positive about everything. Hey! I'd forgotten how sweet your lip rouge could be. Kawaii will have brandy in a moment. It's dying, isn't it? Is it so important, Doctor? Nothing is so important as your own health. I don't see how it could be dying. There may still be some chance. I don't understand what it might be. We can always start over. I must be back at the Cape in a month. I haven't time to start over. Remember? You told me once you wouldn't allow the word impossible to be used. I still haven't used it and I don't intend to. 
time to answer. I'm all right now, thank you. I guess. You did your best. Apparently my best hasn't been good enough. Something about the plant. Oh, come on. to argue with fate, Doctor. I wonder. Get out of here, both of you. Oh, wait. Have him get me some mice, rabbits, chickens, anything he can trap, and I want them now. In the meantime... No, no, Doctor Brady, you can't be helpless. What am I thinking? Rabbits, chicken, and mice, and puppies. I wish that thing had died. I wish it had withered away, and Kawhi had buried it. Get out of here, both of you, and take those damn mutts with you. as the same count as a flood around a human heart. It's all there. You can move as well as you can feel. I know you can. I'll make you move. All I need is the blood of a human being to prove the fact. There will be proof without a shadow of a doubt that man is descended from plant life. I'll make you move. Those stumps, your legs. They're strong enough to carry ten times your weight. It takes the blood of a human heart to prove my theory. You will have the blood of a human heart. You know, I 
said don't get your hopes up about the monster, but actually that's not too bad. They must have spent all $25.50 of the budget on that suit. The artist, the poet, the figure model who loves to show it. Suppose he could be physically attracted to her? No, man, he ain't the type. You don't get enough vitamin E. All these are beat. All these you'll meet in a bucket of blood. Let us make the scene. Crazy. Come, enjoy yourself. <laughs> Where the hilarious enjoy the horrifying. In a bucket of blood. No, you're gonna shoot me, don't shoot! Come to the land of living dreams, where realists dream of the unreal. Walter, you've done something to me. Something deep down inside of my prana. Oh, Walter, I want to be with you. You're creative. Beatniks at their bawdiest. The creative urge at its most primitive. I'm deeply moved. And I shall compose a poem. Love is art. Art is love. It's the weirdest and the wildest. I don't want to make statues anymore. I, I want to get married to you. From the depths of hell comes the Devil's Messenger, starring the master of mystery, Lon Chaney, and Karen Cannon. You could leave my message. You'd have to go back. Up there. Oh, I can't. I won't go back. You will deliver that to a Mr. Donald Powell. Don't be afraid of me. The Devil's <laughs> Messenger delivers gifts from hell, turning man into a ravaging feast. I took a picture of that old farmhouse. There's nobody in the picture. You saw it. Was there anybody in it? No, there wasn't. Somebody has come out of that house, and they're coming toward me. Back from the dead, his lovely victim seeks revenge for her horrible death at the hands of a man driven mad by a gift from hell. Trapped in her icy tomb until the devil's messenger exposed her nakedness in her crystal prison. Now let's get down to here. She becomes the object of a scientist's lust. His consuming desire for her drives him to commit murder, to keep her for himself. Not since he received the apple have gifts inflicted such unnatural consequences. Tonight at midnight, you will be dead. Just how do you intend to kill me? I have no idea. I don't even know you. Crystal ball foreshadows doom. For it is the plaything of the devil. And only he can change the events it foresees. <laughs> you must see what the devil's messenger has in store for you.
Now some sleep for me. Insectivores, by morning we should have proof positive. You should have more faith, much more faith. What did it happen to Karai? Oh, Jackie, I couldn't see me. What happened? That's Jack, that's, that's him. It's moved. What did you do what to did him? Go? It's moved. There you, there you, there you, there you. Dr. Braden, Karai did nothing to your stupid plant. It attacked him. This thing is a monster. You are no longer Dr. Bregan scientist. You are becoming Dr. Bregan madman. Give it up, please. Don't be silly. It's affecting your mind. There is nothing wrong with my mind. Give it up. If that's all you can say, will you get out of here? This is still my family's home. I go where I please. What's wrong with your hand? I have told you. I wear this leather mitt as protection from a cut. Nothing more. Oh. Would you leave me alone for a while? Now, please? Of course, Doctor. happened to his dog. That well, That was my first thought. But the dog was tied a good 15 feet away from him. His arms couldn't have possibly reached that far. Look! Assume the position and open your minds wide. It's time for your... 
cranial cavity. Sir. Ah, uh, yes, my lords and ladies. The cranial cavity search. Here's a chance for all you great geeks out there to prove your geek cred uh, by showing what you know. <laughs> and tonight's cranial cavity search question is... This walking wooden menace is Tabunga from the 1957 monster flick, From Hell It Came. How was this monster created? A. Just another mad scientist experiment? B. He's an alien from the planet Saturn. C. He's possessed by the spirit of a dead native warrior. Or D. He was carved by a witch doctor. <laughs> How did this sprouting shocker come to be? We'll find out after these folks come for your wallets. Answer to tonight's cranial cavity search question. How did this wooden creature come to life? It was C. He's possessed by the spirit of a dead native warrior. <laughs> a young warrior, wrongly accused of killing his father, the chief of the tribe, is put to death. This wooden creature grows from his grave to seek revenge. <laughs> from hell it came. Check it out. <laughs> But now, on to the conclusion of The Revenge of Dr. X, where the movie comes to an end. I know, I know. I know I am right. It's a monster, and it should be destroyed before any more damage can be done. Destroy him when I know I've succeeded? He moved by his own volition. I know it. How could it? How could a plant move? I'm going to prove it one way or another tonight. How? I'm not taking my eye off him for one second. I wish you'd stay with me. If you want me to, Doctor. I do. I may need a witness. Shall I make some coffee? A bit later. It's not moving. It will. In time. I wasn't, but now, I'm not sure.
sitting here talking, the next minute we're out cold. <clears throat> My creation! It's gone! What? Yes, I told you he could move. How could have moved it? I'd go find him. No, you didn't do it. It moved by itself. It's carnivorous. If that thing gets to the village, there is no telling what it might do. Anything. Anything might happen. The villagers. They might destroy my proof of the real basis of human evolution. We've got to warn the people. We must let them know of the danger. We must find him first. That's the important thing. Come on. Ridge. Don't want to follow us there. 
Congratulations, my lords and ladies. You've made it to the end of the revenge of Dr. X. I am proud of each and every one of you. And so is Igor Son. <laughs> well, my lords and ladies, I want to thank you all for watching, and I want to invite you all back again next week when we'll do whatever this is all over again. Ha <laughs> ha! As always, I am Lord Bloodraw saying, uh, geek out. <laughs> <laughs>